Thank you, Michael and Fiona. That was a beautiful offering and a beautiful way to start our service. We are going to begin at the top of our bulletin. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, open our lips. And our uh, mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to and the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit as, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will, and will be. be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Give glory to the name of the Lord. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Give glory to the name of the Lord. Bless our God, you peoples. Let the sun of praise be heard. Our God has kept us among the living and has not allowed our feet to slip. For you, O oh God, have tested us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You brought us into the net. You laid heavy burdens upon our backs. You let people ride over our heads. We went through fire and water, but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. Cry out to God, enjoy all the earth. Cry out to God, enjoy all the earth. Give glory to the name of the Lord. I will enter your house with burnt offerings and will pay you my vows. Those that I promised with my lips and spoke with my mouth when I was in trouble. I will offer you burnt offerings of fatlings with the smoke of rams. I will give you oxen and goats. Come and listen, all you who believe. And I will tell you what God has done for me. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Cry out to God in joy on the earth. Give glory to the name of the Lord. I called out to God with my mouth and praise the Lord with my tongue. 
if I had cherished evil in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. But in truth, God has heard me and has attended to the sound of my prayer. Blessed be God, who has not rejected my prayer, nor withheld unfailing love from me. Cry out to God in joy of the earth, cry out to God in joy of the earth, give glory to the name of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. <clears throat> he has cast down the, high, the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to help his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his eldest children forever, and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. A reading from the book of Acts. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, even as some of your own poets have said for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Peter. Now, who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear and do not be intimidated, but in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you 
and accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sin once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned, I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and I will love them as, and reveal myself to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to introduce you all to our guest preacher today, which we scheduled quite a while ago. Um, Pre-pandemic, we had intended Rabbi Jay Rosenbaum and I to do an interfaith dialogue class on the island to bring members of the Christian and Jewish community together for mutual learning and understanding. And we had intended uh, to have him here at Emmanuel to preach with us as part of that experience. And then, of course, the pandemic happened, and we certainly uh, could not continue with our class, but uh, Jay graciously offered to continue uh, to preach with us today, even though we are in Zoom. Jay is a rabbi emeritus here on the island, I believe I'm getting his title correct, and served uh, at the temple for over 17 years, and has been a longtime islander, and I will let him introduce himself a little bit more and share a good word with us. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Reverend Riley. I just want to, I want to just push my gallery button so I can see everybody. Huh? Come on. It's not letting me. Okay. Ah, much better. Okay. So again, thank you, Reverend Riley, for this wonderful opportunity. And also, um, I'm, I'm grateful to Reverend Riley for motivating me to learn more about Christianity in the past year than I have in the past 10 years. And in the readings that I have done, uh, many of them recommended by Reverend Riley, uh, I've been very deeply impressed by the, by the depth of thought and the compassion and the sophistication uh, and, the, and the goodwill of the Christian thinkers that I've, that I've been reading. Uh, the title of my, of my uh, sermon today will be called God's Picasso, the Jewish Reflection on Incarnation and Resurrection. And I wanna begin with a, with a, a kind of a story. Uh, in the Jewish tradition, there's a prayer that we say 
when we lose our keys or our glasses uh, or, or anything else that's, that's not of major importance. Uh, and, the, and the prayer goes like, I'll, I'll quote the opening lines in the Hebrew and then I'll translate. Amar Rabbi Binyamin, hakol becheskat somin, ad shehakadosh baruch hu meir et inehen. Rabbi Benjamin said, all of us, all human beings, are in a state of blindness until the Holy One opens our eyes. As it is written, and then there's a quotation from the book of Genesis, by Yifkach Elohim God opened her eyes, namely, he opened the eyes of Hagar, and she saw a spring of water. And the reference is to the story of Hagar, who was banished to the desert with her son, Ishmael, and she was, um, she was in despair because she was convinced that her son Yishmael was, was going to die of thirst. And then it says that God opened her eyes and she saw a spring of water, but the implication is that the spring actually was right in front of her the whole time. She just, she couldn't see it. She was looking right at it. Uh, and, and, she, and God opened her eyes in a way that she was able to see what was, what was right, right in front of her. And so the implication of the prayer is that we're, and when, usually when we lose something, we pass, we pass by it you know, several times, it's actually right, it's hiding in plain sight, where sometimes the glasses are on our head, uh, or the keys are just in some place, that, you know, some place that we haven't usually put them, but, they're, but they're, they're, they're not hiding, you know, beneath the surface. And so the implication is that just as God opened the eyes of Agar, and she was able to see what was right in front of her, so may God open our eyes uh, so that we may see what is right in front of us, you know, whether it be our keys or glasses or something else. And I've, I've used this prayer many times. It almost always works. I don't, I don't know that it's magic uh, or, or that it's divine intervention, or maybe it's just that you know, somehow the prayer relaxes you, uh, and, and, you, uh, and you and you see what you're looking for. Uh, what, what, um, uh, the implication, however, is not just, it's not just about the keys, uh, but the passage really uh, it wants to get us thinking. Um, if I was looking at the keys and I didn't notice them, what else have I missed? What else am I looking at? Well, who else am I looking at and not really seeing them? Uh, so, for example, I might be looking straight at a person who I've seen many times before, but not really see them. Uh, I, might, I might be missing something really essential to them. And that's the deeper meaning of the prayer. And, that's, and there are several things that I love about this custom. First of all, the practice is a reminder to us that God is always close to us. Uh, we don't have to go off onto a wilderness retreat. Uh, we don't have to be great biblical scholars. God is available to us in our own homes, in the smallest moments in our lives, and in very concrete ways. In a set of keys, God dwells in the humblest of dwellings. In the physical world, and even in the humblest and unexpected containers in the physical world, like a set of keys or a pair of glasses. And so we learn that every moment in our lives is a spiritual opportunity. Even something as seemingly small and insignificant like losing our keys can be turned into a larger lesson. And this leads to a second lesson, namely that something intangible can be found in physical form something which transcends that form, if we know how to look. There are two Christian doctrines that would seem to separate Christians and Jews. One is incarnation. God became a human being in the person, in the person of Jesus. And the second is resurrection. Jesus rose from the dead. What I'd like to suggest this morning is that these two doctrines about God reflect something about human beings, something about us. I don't pretend to, to be an expert in Christianity, and I certainly would, wouldn't be presumptuous enough to, to say what the, what the resurrection and incarnation means to Christians. I'm simply reflecting very modestly as, a, as an outsider uh, on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a potential meaning. And you can tell me as Christians whether this resonates with you. So I would say that these two doctrines about God reflect something about human nature, a creative tension, which is found in every human being. Namely, that on the one hand, the spirit needs to enter the body in order to fully express itself. It's true of God, and it's also true of us. 
And on the other hand, the spirit needs to transcend the body. The spirit needs to burst out of the confines of the body, both in God and in us, we human beings. And this idea is found both in Christianity and in Judaism. We just get there in different ways, through different symbols. So let me give you an example of what I mean. We're looking, we're in, we're in the art museum, and we're looking at a Picasso, and someone says to us, what are you, what are you looking at? And we say, oh, I'm looking at a Picasso. And the person points out that Picasso has been dead for, for almost 50 years. But we'll say that Picasso is alive and speaking to us through his, through his painting. The physical painting is a concrete expression of Picasso's heart and soul. In fact, if, if, if Picasso could suddenly come alive today and we would speak to him, we would actually learn much more about Matt Picasso from, from, from looking at his painting than we would by actually hearing his words. We might even say that the painting, this painting is Picasso incarnate. That is, the painting is how Picasso's intangible soul enters the world and achieves concrete form. And yet, it's equally true that the painting is more than the paint. It contains a spirit that transcends the paint and cannot fully be explained or contained by the paint. And that is how the Jewish mystics understand how God created the world. We, the world, all the human beings in the world, all of God's creatures are God's Picassos. We are God's artwork. We are the concrete manifestation of God's soul. God expressed himself by creating us. We, not just humans, but everything in the created world, is the spirit that has become flesh. Of course, we can only appreciate this if we're able to look at the world in this way. If we look at a Picasso and only see the paint, we've missed something essential. We've missed the essential. By the same token, our goal is to look at everything in the physical world and see beyond the paint, to see the concrete as an expression of something intangible, the spirit of God. If we human beings can only look at each other and see in each other, as different as we are, the, uh, the signature of the artist with the capital A, since we were all created in God's image, the world would be a different place. So for Christians, this idea, and more I'm sure, is conveyed by the belief in God's incarnation through Jesus and Jesus' resurrection. The Jews, this idea is conveyed in other ways. The Jew gets up in the morning and says, Ani, thank you God for having faith in me. We say, Rabba Munatecha. We get up in the morning, the first thing we do is not express our faith in God. But we thank God for having faith in us. Because the fact that I'm alive means God is investing in me for another day. Therefore, I am one of God's Picassos. God has created me because God has something to say in the world that God cannot say in any other way. That's why I'm still alive. Not only me, but every human being on the face of the earth. And if I want to connect with God, if I want to understand God, if I want to hear God's voice, if I want to connect with God's soul, the best way to do that is by loving one of God's creations. Because each one of God's creations is a message, is a piece of God's soul expressed in tangible form. For Jews and for Christians, incarnation and resurrection are both essential. Incarnation means that what we have to say to the world needs a concrete form. It needs a boundary. For Christians, the boundary is called Christianity. For Jews, it's called Judaism. We don't express love generically. We love the concrete. We love through the concrete. We love particular people. And we love in a particular way. And yet our love cannot be contained by any boundary. It's more than the concrete. And even who we are, what we want to say to the world cannot be contained or explained 
by any one particular concrete expression in the same way that Picasso couldn't say everything he wanted to say with one painting. And therefore God cannot say any, everything that God wants to say with the creation of one human being or a tree or, a, or an elephant or a lion. So in some mysterious, wonderful way, we are more than our container. When, when King Solomon in the Bible uh, built the temple, he pointed out that uh, how is it possible to speak of, of a house of God? What God, God even, the, even the entire universe cannot, even the physical world cannot possibly con fully contain God's spirit. I could much less, much less a, a temple, a church, a synagogue. Uh, and I, and I, believe, I believe that what's said about God can also, can also be said of us who are created in the image of God. And just as God cannot be contained by a statue or even by the greatest temple or cathedral, uh, we are we are the concrete container that cannot cannot be contained. Uh, our our physical selves, even our personalities, doesn't fully express who we really are. We'll always be a little bit more than our concrete manifestations in the world. The challenge for Christians and for Jews, alike and together, is to do justice to both incarnation and resurrection. To be ourselves means to be concrete beings, spirit expressed in matter. But to be in relationship to love is to burst our boundaries, to see beyond the paint, and, and to see in each other the image of God, the signature of the artist with a capital A, and to, and to proclaim when we look at each other, Marabu Masech Adonai, how marvelous is the variety of your creation, O God. In wisdom, you have created us all. Thank you, and God bless you. Thank you, Rabbi Jay, for the blessing of your words and your wisdom. Uh, that was just wonderful to hear. I invite us all together back to our bulletins where we will profess the faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to take a moment to share with you all a reminder of ways in which you can support Emmanuel. Um, traditionally, during a Eucharist or a service together, we would have an offertory. And uh, since we are not physically together, we've wanted there to be a way for you all to continue to support the church. And so we have created a text to give option, the guidelines for which are up on your screen. And you can see this is the Emmanuel website. If you click giving, 
uh, it will take you to this page, give you the instructions for how to do that. Um, we are so grateful for your gifts and your support. That is what allows us to keep uh, providing worship. It allows us to support our uh, partners. As I shared last week, we gave a $10,000 gift to Youth and Family Services and a $10,000 gift to Edible Hope at St. Luke's and Ballard. Uh, we're committed to continuing our outreach work, our service work, and supporting the community, especially through this crisis. So I hope you will continue to support us. And I'll say you all have been so generous and so giving. Um, and I'm just incredibly grateful for this community. If you have any questions about this, you can always reach out to myself or to our treasurer, Sue, um, or anyone else you know who knows all these things at Emmanuel. We continue together in our bulletin. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things that surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessings through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversity through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your, own, as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all, the, bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours especially those celebrating birthdays this week, Tony Banks, Colin Bogar, Dave McKenna, Kathy Klein, Cammie Bollinger, Ben Lamperty, and Grace Wandell. And grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially the Reverend John Allen, Jerry Griffith Beggs, Niall Clark, Diane Goodman, Richard Hall, Lorna Hamill, Joyce Hedges, Hannah Hooper, Peter Mackenheimer, Michael Miller, 
Sue Rawlings, Karen Rowley, Ron Smith, Vicki Smith, Don Snow, Lillian Snow, William Victory, Michael Wandell, Julie Wigan, and Peter Wiley. And give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them joy, the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Joan Buckley, Larry Brown, John Pluth, Matt Temple, and those who mourn, that your will for them may be fulfilled and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We lift up all the prayers named in our hearts and on our minds. We pray for all who suffer from COVID-19, for all who has, have lost their lives and for all who mourn. We pray for those who are on the front lines, sacrificing their well-being to care for the world. We lift up the prayers you know in our hearts. For asylum seekers and in refugee camps all over the world, and for all the most vulnerable who are suffering at risk from COVID. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretch out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we reaching forth our hand in love may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen.